If you're in tanks and make no mistake, you've come to the right place. Just give to Neil the time to straight up blow your mind with a new show of joy in a plank. Hello everyone, hope you're having a good day. Let's not waste any time and talk about the subject of today's video, Arcane. If you missed this one, no worries, I got your back. All that you need to know is that this is a show that aired on Netflix back in November of last year. It's based on the League of Legends world and characters, but the show acts as a beginner-friendly introduction to the setting. I didn't have any previous knowledge before starting the show, and I never felt like I was missing any key context. It was met with a ton of praise for basically everything. The writing, the animation design, world building, music, just yeah, huge critical praise. And while I'm late to jump on the bandwagon here, I also loved it. So if you missed out on this show when it came out, I highly recommend checking it out. I loved it so much that I even watched it twice in the span of like a month. And I normally don't rewatch things that quickly. The show has already become a huge inspiration to me and has made me rethink about how I go about writing characterization. And the animation, oh. <laughs> Wow, just wow, spectacular. After giving it a few months to sit and digest in my brain space, I easily think it's become one of my all-time favorite shows. So please, go check it out if it sounds up your alley, but be warned that this point forward, I am going to be talking about spoilers. Okay, well, I think as good of a place to start as any is one of my favorite dynamics to come out of the show, and that was the odd upsetting and yet heartbreaking father-daughter dynamic between Jinx and Silco. This part of the show really blew me away. At the end of episode three, everything goes belly up for Vi and Powder. Their friends and father are dead, a terrifying villain who controls an even more terrifying super serum drug has basically won control of their home with the death of said father. And on top of all that, this might have been prevented if Powder hadn't intervened with her best of intentions. All of this is just heartbreaking and truly quite upsetting. I don't know that I've ever been in more awe and horror and just shook at how all of this played out. All of the pieces fall together so perfectly into this tragedy. And when the dust settles and Vi realizes that it was Powder who caused the explosion, she lashes out. All of the insecurities that Vi has been trying to quell in her younger sister end up being used as weapons, and she hits Powder before walking away to cool off. Now, of course, if Vi wasn't kidnapped by the police a second later, it's undeniable that Vi would have realized her anger might have been justified, but treating Powder like that wasn't right, and the sisters could have had a chance to reconcile, but instead, Powder is left screaming, crying, and abandoned by all of the family that she knew. And then in walks Silco, <sighs> the terrifying villain who just won a major victory for his twisted ideological plans to turn the Undercity into his own nation. We've got to talk about Silco for a minute here. Silco is the kind of villain I just love so much when written properly, and boy did Arcane knock this one out of the park. We find out that Vander and Silco were essentially blood brothers with plans to rebel against Piltover and free the Undercity from its oppressive and uncaring rule. But when confronted with what such a rebellion would cost, Vander changed and Silco didn't. Silco was ready to sacrifice everything, ruin the lives of his own people with drugs that made their lives worse for the short-term benefit of superhuman abilities. But the conflict between Silco and Vander had come to a head at some point in the past. Vander attacked Silco to stop his plans, nearly killing him. <laughs> and I really have to stop here and just admire what a great job this show does in portraying violence. Every time violence occurs on this show, it's brutal, it's violent, and most importantly, it's not fun. Don't get me wrong, it's entertaining to watch, but the impact that violence leaves on these characters is 
tangible, they're impacted by violence done to them, and worse for the violence that they inflict upon others. For an action show to acknowledge that, hey, violence and fighting is actually pretty scary and traumatizing, even when good guys like Vander inflict violence on bad guys like Silco, both characters are made worse for it. Vander lives with the guilt of what his violence has done, and Silco is traumatized by what he sees as a betrayal from his brother, and even more convinced of his twisted convictions. It's with all of these factors in play that Silco finds Powder. As a frightened child, Powder latches onto the first adult she sees, and Silco can only react in shock, and in a twist so perfectly set up. He hugs her back and suddenly is in the position of parental guardian for this child. This child that he essentially just killed Vander for protecting. Uh, <laughs> I just... Woo. <laughs> like, damn, I can't stress how difficult this moment is to pull off. To make the audience believe that these two characters would come together like this and have it be a moment that just makes your audience go, oh... No, 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 no. I mean, I get why, but no. And that's just the end of episode three. We already have a sense of how these characters will react to traumatic life events by the end of the third episode. And then, then we get to the time skip. This time skip is fantastic. Life has moved on in a believable way since, and you can feel how time has done nothing but let these open wounds fester in both Jinx and Silco. This is where their dynamic gets really interesting to me. So Silco is essentially ruling the underground now. He's still fighting towards freeing the underground from Piltover, but he's playing the long game in terms of that goal. He has the police in his back pocket, so no one in Piltover suspects a thing. He has the respect of all the other major crime lords in the Undercity, and even when he doesn't, he can, like, kind of put them in their place, like, as soon as anything happens. And, of course, he still controls the manufacturing of the crazy super serum drug. Silco has basically nothing to worry about except waiting for his plans to come to fruition. But he also now has Jinx. Now... Jinx is an interesting character to talk about for a lot of reasons. We spent the first three episodes with her as one of the good guys, but now she's working with Silco, who is unquestionably not a good guy. Jinx has had no help for her trauma, and it stunted her growth emotionally. It should be said that Jinx's character is very clearly based off of the Harley Quinn, crazy girl kind of trope. Now, that trope comes with a lot of baggage, particularly in how neurodivergent people are portrayed, and in general, its use of words like crazy is more so about a cool female power fantasy rather than a thoughtful look into mental illness. And I'm not a trained professional on the subject of mental health or particularly equipped to tackle how damaging this kind of portrayal in media is, so take what I have to say with a big old bucket of salt. But... Jinx's character is definitely looking to have its cake and eat it too. What I mean by that is that Jinx is still checking a lot of the boxes of the Harley Quinn female power fantasy trope, while also treating her trauma and hurt as something serious and not just there to be quirky. She's a fully realized character. And personally speaking, I think it works really well from a narrative standpoint. I want to see Jinx get the help she so desperately needs. I want her to reunite with her sister and for everything to go back to the way it was between them. And I want her not to be tormented by these demons of her past. I want her to be safe and happy. But I also know that those things aren't going to be easy for Jinx to achieve because of what's happened to her. And to top it all off, her only real support is Silco, who is shockingly quite a loving father figure. <laughs> you can tell that these two really trust each other. But, and this is the part of the relationship I find so fascinating, the support that they offer each other is bad. <laughs> Even with the best of intentions. Particularly Silco, who just sees himself and what happened to him in Jinx. He can't help Jinx overcome her trauma because Silco is literally who he is because of his own very similar trauma. We see it time and time again. 
them feeding this never-ending cycle where they reinforce their bad experiences on each other. Silco is a loving father figure willing to do anything for his adoptive child, and he genuinely tries his best with Jinx, but it ends up being his undoing. The parallel between Silco and Vander is now complete. Both were father figures willing to sacrifice everything for their daughters, even if it means their ideals get pushed to the side. I just, I love this so much. This was written so well. Love it. My other favorite character from this season was Victor. Like, <laughs> as soon as he showed up on screen and started talking, I was like, oh no. I love he. Victor is a scientist working under Heimerdinger who has managed to climb the social ladder into Piltover from Zaun, making Victor one of the few people living in Piltover who actually has some perspective on how the poorest of the city's populace lives. Victor is also quite sick and disabled, using a cane to help him move around. Now, when they first introduced this character, while I was simultaneously falling in love, I was also having a wave of dread wash over me, because I could just see so many bad ways that his story could go. I'm happy to say that I was pleasantly surprised with where they decided to take his character, though. And again, since I didn't know anything about League of Legends, I didn't have any expectations going in, or even know that Victor was a champion, so I was honestly pretty terrified of Victor being thrown under the bus for Jace's sad backstory, or Jace and Victor playing out this whole jealousy arc that they kind of hint at, but luckily don't do. I'm so glad it didn't go that way. Don't get me wrong, Victor's story isn't all sunshine and rainbows. It, uh, it goes some pretty dark places I was not expecting, but... <sighs> I do want to start off by saying that I really love and relate to Victor just... Mm, so much. While I don't personally have a disability like Victor's, his struggle with the class system in Arcane is something that I could relate to hard. Being from a poor family and having those life experiences while living in a more privileged people's world is so isolating and difficult. Hearing his own friends in Piltover call the Undercity people dangerous while Victor is right there is so honest to the kind of microaggressions people face daily. And just like every character in this show, you know that Victor is trying his hardest to do what he thinks is the right thing. Everyone's life experiences gives them a different perspective, and when Victor finds out that his condition is getting worse and he's dying, it makes him more desperate to put his soul into his work and maybe find a cure. He's a man running out of time, and the empty platitudes from people who have no idea what he's going through just feel so hollow, and you want nothing more than for Victor to succeed and win for once. And in a way, he does, but it takes Victor bending to his previously held principles and literally costing another person's life. Oh, the show, man, is just so good. It's so interesting and engaging. And if you haven't watched the show yet and listened to all my rambling, well, I've definitely spoiled some things for you, but I promise the writing is just as interesting and nuanced with all the other characters. If what I talked about sounds interesting to you at all, you should definitely give the show a watch. Many of you have probably already watched the show, and I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Please tell me what some of your favorite parts were or who your favorite characters are. Please let me hear it. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed my ramblings and artwork, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Stay inspired.